Democrats in Maryland say while they'll find money to bolster policing in Baltimore, America's deadliest city, they will table a key initiative designed to increase educational outcomes and alleviate chronic underfunding of the state's most neglected schools. This has angered educators, advocates, and experts who see well-funded schools as an antidote to high crime rates. The Democratic leaders of the legislature cited these comments of Republican Governor Larry Hogan, who on December 11th called the Kerwin Commission's preliminary price tag too expensive. No, we cannot afford that. The commission is a bipartisan committee that's worked for two years to determine how Maryland could foster a world-class education system, finding the state spent less money on jurisdictions with low-income students of color than wealthier ones. The commission's final price tag, released December 19th, recommended phasing in increases to education, $1.5 billion in 2021 to $3.8 billion in 2030. Hogan says he will work with Democrats on Kerwin and stress the need for accountability in how this money is spent. We're also leading the fight for more accountability in our local school systems and pushing to raise academic standards and to root out corruption and mismanagement. Hogan says he's given record funding to schools. And we invested a record $25 billion in K-12 education and a record $1.4 billion in school construction. And while he's increased school spending, studies show schools need billions more to adequately teach all students. Kerwin is the successor to Thornton, a statewide committee established in the wake of a historic lawsuit which found the state had neglected Baltimore's majority black school system. And the most important part of the Maryland Constitution is Article 8. The Article 8 is the education article. Yeah. And it says that the first thing that the state does before it does anything is to fund and educate the children of Maryland. Yeah. Meanwhile, the recently re-elected Republican governor has proposed spending an additional $1.9 billion on school construction. To bring Maryland schools all across our state into the 21st century. Funded in part by a referendum passed by voters in November to spend casino revenue on public education. But Democratic leaders have maintained these funds need to be used for Kerwin. And many say, while money for construction and repairs is badly needed, it shouldn't come instead of funding Kerwin's recommendations. We, as a state, voted for that ballot initiative to put casino money in public education, not for construction, and bricks and mortar issues are very important, but not for construction, but for the, the work that's needed in schools for um, adequate pay for teachers and for um, universal pre-K programming. Kerwin's backers in the legislature say they hope to start funding it in the upcoming 2019 legislative session, even though new school funding formulas may not be approved until 2020. The Real News spoke to students, parents, and educators in Baltimore about the changes they want to see in their schools. I remember one day it was so, like, cold in the building. We had students in, like, bubble coats, like, full winter coats. Many students, like John Gray, say they've experienced extreme weather in the classroom. You're locked in, take your coat off. You're in class in the same stuff you were outside in, right? You can't focus in those conditions. Um, at Bard, uh, I think it's like one spot in the entire building that has actual, like, like if you ask the students, um, there's a bathroom and the heat's always blasting in there. Gray says these changes that Kerwin has proposed, like culturally relevant curriculum, are vital to increasing educational outcomes. The school, 83% of the population of students are students of color, but we teach vastly European history, like white culture, right? That doesn't make sense. We need to teach our, we need to teach the students that are in the class about themselves. We don't have culturally relative education. There's, I don't know if there's, I doubt there's a class that teaches on like Baltimore history or teaches on black history in Baltimore. Hampstead Hill Academy was recently recognized as a top school in the state. It was only one of three schools that received a five-star rating in Baltimore City. So I think that rating and ranking schools is very complex. Um, we were very excited as a staff when we found out that we, we would receive the highest five-star rating ranking. And uh, there are only 219 five-star schools in the whole state. Principal Matt Hornbeck argues educational outcomes won't change by only investing in buildings. It is not, the research shows us, uh, the it is not the first thing and the, certainly not the only thing needed when you're talking about school improvement and adequate 
uh, educational programming. Hornbeck says his school's success underscores the need for the proposals backed by Kerwin. But the relationship between the teacher and what they're teaching, the content, and the student is where the whole game is. You can be in a nice room teaching going on that does not get the job done. So a nice room doesn't mean that therefore good things are happening. Ten-year-old Ruth Schober is another student who's recently experienced extreme weather inside her classroom. Like we were freezing and shivering in our coats and like math was really hard to focus because like everything was freezing. Yeah, so, so, so cold weather is a problem and then hot weather is a problem. Currently the first week of school here at Medfield, it was too hot. We had half days every day of the first week and a half day at the first day of the second week. While this deeply concerns her mother, Melissa Schober, she says she's also concerned about teachers and curriculum. Um, it is very nice that we want to have great physical plants, but without highly qualified teachers, great curriculum, attention to students with special needs, um, it doesn't matter or it doesn't matter enough. Um, I would love for this building to be refurbished and it will be under 21st century rebuilding. But if the wonderful people who work inside aren't in the building, it doesn't matter. It's just a building. We need both to make our students successful. She says the city can do more to contribute to its school system. The city needs to spend more money on capital improvements for schools. We spend $19 million now. That's $100 million or more less than similar jurisdictions. Carroll County and Somerset County spend proportionally a higher portion of their budget. Even tiny, tiny Somerset County, which has, I think, less than 10,000 kids in school there, spends about $7 million on capital improvements. Carroll County spends about 38. We spend 19. That's a problem for Mayor Pugh, and we really need the citizens of the city to push hard on Annapolis, January to April, and we need them to push hard on Mayor Pugh for better spending for capital investments for schools. Jamal Jones is a leader of the youth-led Baltimore Algebra Project, who have been demanding educational equity in Baltimore for decades. What does a building do? if the product that's coming out of the building is still lackluster. You culturally relevant information, having culturally relevant teaching, having making sure that the, the, there are the proper number of people in the school to staff all the different needs, to be able to hit all the needs that individual students across the state of Maryland have. He says advocates must keep up the pressure on elected officials if Kerwin is to be adopted, which he sees as a step towards reaching educational equity is where we are now. This is the level of investment that will be required to right size us for now to then be able to say well what is needed further or what we'll be able to do. At the end of the day we just did a temperature check, right? We did a pulse check and the pulse check came back and said we need 4.4 billion dollars in order to make sure things are right. And what the governor said is I don't care. I'm good. I'll invest in these buildings. So rather than getting the type of care that Baltimore and other people in Maryland will need because so goes Baltimore, so goes the state of Maryland. We'll get some nice shiny buildings and we won't have people who get to come out of those buildings who can go take jobs that will be able to actually maneuver them into a better space in the economy. All agree that the decisions made about the future of the state's education system will have ramifications felt for decades to come. For The Real News, this is Jessel Knorr in Baltimore.